Hello viewers, my name is Engineer Abudele, popularly known as Dilex. I have come again with another episode on security and safety, which is important to every life. Today we'll be discussing on why do some cars catch fire on motion? Because why it is important for you to know is that there are some things you can avoid. There are some things you can prevent. And once you are able to prevent it, it will be very difficult for you to fall victim of fire accident. Number one, it can be caused by fuel leakage through a porous pipe that convey fuel to the hanging. For example, I have with me here a pipe. Usually, those pipes are usually like this. And the moment there is crack, though this one is not cracked, but the moment there is cracked, then easily you can see it can develop a, a, a hole. Once you start the ignition of your engine, the fuel will be dropping. And as the fuel drops, and the car is on motion. Of course, the exhaust pipe will be hot. And once there is a droppage of fuel on exhaust pipe, it's going to ignite fire, which will lead to a very serious fire heartbreak. So, and that's why the only way you can do is, if you every morning, once you start your car in the morning, try to perceive an odor. Fuel is something that used to smell. Once there is a leakage, you'll be hearing the odor of the fuel. And once that is observed, it is essential you don't go out let a mechanic come and check where there is leakage or personally if there is anyone that is leaking obviously that you can see on your own then it's better you stop the engine of the car and invite the mechanic to change the pipe then number two a rusted and porous tank when you have a rusted and porous fuel tank your your car tank may be you know may be porous and you won't know but the only way to know is that you ensure that there's no droppage of any fuel. While you are traveling, if you have a leakage in your tank, you may accidentally run through a bad road with contour. And that contour can cause a lot of problem. And how can it cause problem? If you run on it and there is a sudden scratch between the underneath of your car and the contour, it can lead to spark. It's just as if when you bring two stones together, when you, when, you, when you strike two stones together, there will be spark. So when you strike an iron with stone, there will be spark. So already there is a leakage of fuel under your tank. And a sudden, a sudden scratch of metal and stone can lead to spark. And already the fuel is leaking. So what do you expect? It will catch fire. And that can lead to a very serious fire outbreak, which is very, very dangerous. Another cause of car fire outbreak when the vehicle is on motion is partial contact. The partial contact may not be uh, usually caused by the owner of the vehicle. That is why I want to throw this very, this very one to all the automotive electrical technicians who are working on people's car. So once you join any wire, once there is any wire that you join together, ensure it is firmly joined together. And once it's firmly joined, it will avoid partial contact. And after joining it, ensure you tape it. You tape every, every, every nick wire. Don't, don't, leave, don't just join wire and leave without taping it. It is dangerous because two polarities don't see each other. Positive and negative, don't, they don't want to see each other. They don't want to see each other. Once you bring them together, there will be spark. And once there is spark, not just another spark, if it, if it breathes, the, those wires along the channel, along the path, it will, it will get hot and it can lead to serious fire outbreak. Another sensitive causes of fire outbreak while vehicle is on motion is the replacement of a blown fuse. Sometimes we have a reason for our fuse to get blown. Maybe there is a little problem or error on the circuit. And instead of it to cause a serious fire outbreak, the fuse will blown off. If you want to replace your fuse, ensure you replace your fuse with the same current value. Usually, car f the, fuse are, the car fuse are usually like this. And once it is blown off, look at the current. It's usually written in the body. If it is 10 amps, replace with 10 amps. Don't replace with 20 amps. And do not use, do not use a wire to bridge it together. Some, some are fond of that. They peel out the insulator 
and they use wire to bridge it and they connect it back they connect it back and once that is done actually it will work it's not as if it's not going to work it will work but the catastrophe is that if there is eventuality for the fuse to blow it will not blow then it will return the, the high current will return to the circuit and it will it can lead to fire outbreak and that is why it's important that once we are changing fuse we should ensure we replace that fuse with the same value i want to beseech every one of you who used to replace fuse by yourself i'm not saying you should not replace fuse by yourself you, of course you can do it without call, calling technician but ensure you are replacing it with the same value with the same current value and that will help you to maintain the car without any perplexity and however if it is technician that is doing it just tell them if you need to change the fuse please change the fuse with correct value another sensitive and common factor is when you have overheating overheating can cause fire outbreak in fact a serious fire outbreak when the car is on motion when the engine cooling temperature is going above normal we said your car is having overheating the overheating temperature can melt two wires together and once two wires are met together, the next thing is spark. For example, overheating brings positive and negative together because the wire will melt. And once the wire melts together, you know the insulator at the, the insulator at the back of the wire. This is the insulator. The rubber you are seeing is in the is the insulator, while the main wire is inside. The moment the two the, the insulators are melt and it remains the wire, which is the conductor. Once it, once it breaks together, the next thing is spark. The wire will melt and it will start, you know, it will ignite fire immediately, which is very dangerous. And so, once you are traveling, ensure you keep watching your dashboard. Once you watch your, your dashboard, make sure you look into the gauge, the temperature gauge. Once the temperature has risen, the moment the, it's navigating toward the red, that is danger, then it's better you park the car and look for mechanic to check for you and find out the cause of the overheating. If you don't find that, if you try to manage it, it will cause a damage to your car if it doesn't even result to fire outbreak. So it's not manageable. Overheating is not manageable. If, if you notice it when you are in the bush, it is better you still park and allow the engine to get cooler. So once it gets cooler, then you can quickly start your journey and move faster to where you, you feel you can get somebody to work on it for you. Then you park and allow somebody to work on it for you. Once you are able to take care of all these common factors that causes fire outbreak, and I can assure you that you can use car throughout, the, throughout your lifetime without experiencing fire accident. Thank you for watching. Watch out for the next episode. It's going to be fantastic on security and safety. Stay safe, stay secured. Thank you and God bless you.